when you look at the dorsal aspect of the brain stem kinds we got to remove the cerebellum so in this picture you can see the cerebellum is removed once the cerebellum is removed and this part of the cerebellum is reflected to one side the floor of fourth ventricle is exposed now the floor of fourth ventricle is exposed <coughs> Okay, so floor of fourth ventricle is exposed, but important thing to note here that when the cerebellum is removed, the one part of the brainstem which is not distorted at all, despite of cutting off the peduncles and all, is the midbrain. Now look at these four colliculus that you see here, guys. This is we have the superior colliculus here, and that is inferior colliculus, and all four colliculus together, all the four colliculus together are referred as corpora quadrigemina. that is corpora quadrigemina the four gem like structure at the dorsal aspect that is corpora quadrigemina in between the corpora quadrigemina i can see the pineal gland also although i will i will tell you about this pineal gland in the sagittal section but you can see the pineal gland projecting between the two colliculus so that's corpora quadrigemina basically it's a midbrain it's a dorsal aspect of the midbrain which is having these four colliculus and one important information that you should know that superior colliculus is the level of the midbrain where the third nucleus is present. Nucleus, guys. I'm not talking about nerve, I'm talking about the nucleus. And inferior colliculus is the level where the fourth nucleus is present. In the midbrain, we have third nucleus and fourth nucleus. So third nucleus is present exactly at the level of superior colliculus and fourth nucleus is at the level of inferior colliculus. In fact, the only cranial nerve which was emerging from the dorsal aspect of brainstem is a fourth nerve, which you can see here. That's the trochlear nerve, the only nerve which emerges from the dorsal aspect of the brainstem. Before I take your uh, attention to this fourth ventricle, you can see the shape of the fourth ventricle is just, just like a rhombus. We call it a rhomboid fossa. So guys, before we go into this fourth ventricle, what I want you to understand that because cerebellum is smaller in size when you compare it with the entire brainstem, so the peduncles which are coming from the brainstem and connecting to cerebellum, they are all converging toward the cerebellum. Like superior cerebellar peduncle has to come down, inferior peduncle has to go up and the middle has to go straight and that's how all the three peduncles they come into the cerebellum here. So imagine if this is a, this is a superior cerebellar peduncle, look at that my pointer there, that is a superior peduncle there. Similarly inferior peduncle will be there okay. and then we have a middle peduncle which is there in that. So, as you can see, once it, this portion is cut, once this portion is cut here, the three peduncles can be seen. The superior peduncle is coming down. So this here is a superior cerebellar peduncle. I'm writing SCP. The one which is coming from below here, that is ICP, that is inferior cerebellar peduncle. Inferior cerebellar peduncle. And this, the one which is on the side here is a middle cerebellar peduncle, is the middle cerebellar peduncle. Superior cerebellar peduncle is going down and inferior cerebellar peduncle is going up and they're fusing with each other and that's why the middle peduncle stays out. When you talk about the boundary of the fourth ventricle, it's the superior and the inferior cerebellar peduncle. Middle cerebellar peduncle is not contributing to the boundary here, guys. It's the superior and the, the inferior cerebellar peduncle to be seen there. So one important thing to remember that middle cerebellar peduncle, guys, this middle cerebellar peduncle, because it stays a little out here, so this is not contributing. This is not contributing to fourth ventricle boundary. In the boundary of this fourth ventricle here, the middle cerebellar peduncle is not having a contribution. I hope you understood my point because superior and inferior are joining with each other and middle stays a little out. If this here is a dorsal aspect of the spinal cord and then brainstem. Now you all know guys, in the dorsal aspect of brainstem, this here is fasciculus gracilis and that is fasciculus cunatus. And we already know that fasciculus gracilis and cunatus, they found their nucleus in the middle oblongata. So fasciculus gracilis is going into this nucleus here. So we have a nucleus gracilis present here and we have a nucleus cunatus there. And these tubercles which are because of those, these nucleus are called as a cuneate tubercle and gracile tubercle this one and this one. So this tubercle here is called as a cuneate 
tubercle. Why do we call it cuneate tubercle? Because we have a nucleus cunitus inside here and we have nucleus gracilis here, so we call it the gracile tubercle. That is the gracile tubercle. Overall now I can say that superior cerebellar peduncle number one, inferior cerebellar peduncle number two, gracile tubercle and cuneate tubercle, they are the one which are forming the boundary of the fourth ventricle. Guys, when it comes to boundary of the fourth ventricle, remember these are the four structures there. Superior cerebellar peduncle, inferior cerebellar peduncle, we got a cuneate tubercle and we got a gracile tubercle. So they are the one which are forming the boundary of the fourth ventricle here. Number one. <clears throat> Number two, the second thing is, when you look at the floor of fourth ventricle, there is a sulcus there. In the floor of fourth ventricle, I am marking that sulcus for you. I hope you can appreciate that dotted line here. This sulcus present in the floor of fourth ventricle is called a sulcus limitans. This is an embryological sulcus which is called as the sulcus limitans. Sulcus limitans. And this sulcus limitans, guys, this sulcus limitans is this sulcus limitans is basically limiting the neural tube in two part alar plate, basal plate and all. So whatever I am going to highlight here for you now is present medial to the sulcus limitans and this all is a motor part of the neural tube. All the motor nuclei will be here, no sensory nuclei will be in this region here. This portion guys, the one portion which, which I have highlighted here, it is present where? It is present medial to the sulcus limitans. Embryologically this plate is called as a basal plate. Embryologically this plate is called as a basal plate and the outer plate is called as an alar plate. But we don't have to remember that embryological name now. What I need to know that whatever is present medial to sulcus limitans, it is all because of the motor nuclei situated there. And all the sensory nuclei will be situated in the, the lower part. The sensory nuclei will be present in the lower part, in the outer part here. Like one elevation which is present here, if you can see my pointer here, this elevation here guys is called as a facial colliculus. This elevation here is called as what colliculus? That is a facial colliculus and this is the one which people most of the people get uh, got wrong answers for in the in the previous examinations below facial colliculus i can see there are two more elevation here i'm still talking about medial to sulcus limitans we have a hypoglossal triangle and below hypoglossal triangle there is another triangle here called as a vagal triangle Whereas lateral to sulcus limitants, guys, this area which I am pointing at right now, lateral to sulcus limitants, it's all sensory area here. It's made up of LR plate. And the triangle which is present here, if I may point for you, a triangle which is present here, this is called as the vestibular triangle. This whole triangle, this big triangle over there is called as a vestibular triangle. This big triangle here is called as a vestibular triangle there. Facial colliculus, what is this facial colliculus made up of? We all know that abducent nucleus, the sixth nucleus is surrounded by the facial nerve. That's how the facial nerve makes an internal genu around the sixth nucleus and comes out here. And that's what forms this elevation which is called as a facial colliculus. So if the question is that what is a nucleus present deep to the facial colliculus, the nucleus present deep to facial colliculus is a sixth nucleus. It's the facial nerve which is winding around it here. But the nucleus, although the name is facial colliculus, we have what nucleus? It's the sixth nucleus. It's the sixth nucleus, guys, is present deep to the facial colliculus. Below hypoglossal triangle, there is hypoglossal nucleus. I'm writing the entire thing, the nucleus, because there are two different type of questions here. Below vestibular triangle, there is a vestibular nucleus, or you can say eighth nerve nucleus. Eighth nucleus is there. Nucleus. And of course, before, below vagal triangle is a vagal nucleus, the dorsal nucleus of vagus or simply let's call it vagal nucleus is there. Now, if the question says what are the nucleus, what are the nucleus present in the floor of fourth ventricle, then your answer is this. The nucleus which are present deep to the floor of fourth ventricle, we have what nucleus? We have eighth nucleus, that is vestibular nucleus to be more precise. And then we have sixth nucleus, facial colliculus ke deep, we have sixth nucleus. We got a hypoglossal nucleus, we got a the vagal nucleus. Now this question was asked twice on the facial colliculus. Once they asked this question on the facial colliculus that what is a nucleus present deep to the following elevation. Obviously the nucleus deep to the following elevation is a sixth nucleus. 
But the very next year, the question asked in the PGME exam was, they put an arrow on this facial colliculus and the question was that injury to the structure producing the following elevation, injury to the structure producing this following elevation will lead to the paralysis of which muscle? So guys, if the injuries to facial colliculus, don't write lateral lectus as the answer. Because before the sixth nerve, facial nerve is also, sixth nucleus, facial nerve is also there. If this is a sixth nucleus here, we know it is surrounded by the facial nerve. So if the injury is to facial colliculus, the first thing that gets involved is not the nucleus, is the nerve. Facial nerve will be involved first and then the nucleus will come in here. So guys, if the question is about injury to facial colliculus, If the injury is to the facial colliculus, make sure your better answer is it's the lower motor neuron lesion of facial nerve. Lower motor neuron lesion of facial nerve. It's a facial nerve which will be affected here. So you have to choose any of the muscle of facial expression will be involved here. They purposefully will give you lateral rectus in the option. Don't go with lateral rectus because the injury to facial colliculus, obviously the facial nerve is involved here. Yes, the nucleus present deep inside is the sixth nucleus, but having an injury to facial colliculus obviously is, is involving the nerve which is surrounding the nucleus, which is more outside. So these are few things that you got to keep in mind in the dorsal aspect of brainstem. First of all, just find out the colliculus, look for the fourth nerve, the only nerve from the dorsal aspect here. In the boundary of the fourth ventricle, four important thing guys, the two peduncles, superior and the inferior peduncle, no middle peduncle there. And the two nucleus here, that is gracile nucleus uh, or you can say tubercle or cuneate tubercle because of the nucleus, these tubercles are forming this boundary inferior laterally. Find out the sulcus limitants in the floor of fourth ventricle and the sulcus limitants, medial to sulcus limitants, you will see three elevation, facial colliculus, hypoglossal triangle, vagal triangle, and then outside we have a big triangle over there, which is all about the different vestibular nuclei. So that is a vestibular triangle.